What was it like for you being Colombian but growing up in Toronto? I feel like a lot of kids that are born to immigrant parents share that same experience, like mm -hmm. where you, you're a chameleon, you know? It teaches you to be more malleable because you're in a one country at home and then you're in another country when you leave. But it also taught me to appreciate things more because my dad was working doubles, like the immigrant struggle is a real thing. Yep. And, and my mom was working at home and babysitting y cocinando y vendiendo tamales, haciendo de todo. When I had that shift of like awareness, it definitely just gave me this wave of gratitude to be Colombian and Canadian and come from a family that made an effort to make sure I stayed connected to my roots regardless of where we were in the world. It's the pride that just makes me so happy, it makes me smile. That was a clip from De La Calle. It's a new Paramount Plus docu-series which explores the evolution and the impact of Latin music globally. So joining me now is co-creator and host of the series, Nick Barilli. Nice to see you. Great to see you. Thank you for having me. I think the last time I saw you, I pretended like I was a really great soccer player, and this was about <laughs> 10 years ago. We used to play soccer at, what was it? I think I went twice. Yeah, but and this was all a dream, and now you're living <laughs> this it. Was, this was all a dream, but for you, I feel like this is something that you have been so passionate about. Um, I've followed your career. Obviously, you have been so heavy in the scene when it comes to hip hop music, um, bringing to light the culture, the awareness, the movement that comes with hip hop culture. Now you're doing it with Latin music, which you've been doing throughout the years, too. So why was it so important to start a show like this? And, and what has it meant for you in the process? I think for me, you know, I emigrated to the U.S. with my mom when I was eight. Uh, I didn't speak any English. I learned how to speak English at Malcolm X Elementary School. And, you know, I, I lived the life that a lot of us live, which was I was speaking English at school and Spanish at home, listening to artists like El General and Calle Trece and artists like Tupac and, you know, Biggie and a lot of different artists. And I felt like there was two worlds that I had to straddle, you know, like Jesse Reyes talked about being a chameleon. Mm -hmm. And for me, this series was really about bringing those worlds together and, and, and uh, examining the Latin diaspora and the different levels of it, from immigration to culture to race to history, all these different things. Uh, and music is the perfect conduit to do so. Now, you mentioned Calle Trece. I watched the episode, of course, on Puerto Rico because my family is from Puerto Rico. Um, there's, a, there's a unity almost in a sense when it comes to politics in that episode with Calle Trece. Can mm -hmm. you just kind of elaborate on the impact and also the voice music provides when it comes to politics, especially in a location like Puerto Rico? For sure. I mean, I think hip hop from its inception was uh, something that provided a platform for communities that never really had a voice. And I think as we travel through Latin America, including Puerto Rico, we see that the reason why hip hop was one of the, the genres that people turn to is because it really is the voice of people who don't have voices. And I think, uh, as we saw in Puerto Rico, uh, in the protests, like hip hop, reggaeton, bomba y plena, like all these different art forms are a form of resistance. It's a form of, of people who are often marginalized by uh, mainstream society to actually have a voice and, and feel like their, their life matters. I feel like you're giving us a reason to watch just because I can feel your passion right now. I do want to go over the locations you went because you traveled to a lot of different places. You sat down with these artists, a number of different artists in different locations. So what was that like for you? But also, did you get one common theme from all of them and all of those visits? Yeah, we started in uh, New York. And from New York, we went to Panama, which if a lot of people don't know, it's actually where reggaeton started because it went from like reggae to reggae in Espanol and then reggaeton. Then we went to Puerto Rico, Cuba, Spain, Colombia, Argentina, and we finished in Mexico. Uh, That's a lot of places. It's a lot of places <laughs> to travel. But also it, sounds like a lot of fun, by the way. It, it, I'd love to go. It was a lot of fun. And I think as Latinos, we have a lot more in common mm -hmm. than, than things that are different. Obviously, each country has its own history and its own culture and its own food and, and, and that. But I think there's... If I had to say one thing, there's a warmness. Like mm -hmm. every place that I went to, whether I knew people there or I didn't know people there, once people understood what the project was about, they treated me like family. And I think that's something very much about our culture that people just kind of open their arms and bring you into their homes, into their neighborhoods, and treat you like family once they understand that you're there to, to tell their story mm -hmm. and, and bring more awareness to, uh, you know, we had a lot of superstars, but I also wanted to bring awareness to the pioneers, people that maybe didn't get their flowers on their way up to now what is a billion dollar industry. So 
uh, trying to find that balance between showing our superstars and also making sure that our pioneers get their flowers. What's the reaction you've gotten so far, not only from the artists, but also people who are watching? The, the reaction has just been overwhelming uh, because for us, you know, growing up, we didn't have a lot of shows that talked mm -hmm. about our culture, that talked about the different things that we go through. So whether it was premiering one of the shows at the Latino Film Festival or yesterday we played the Puerto Rico episode at UTA, people coming up and they're like, look, I'm from this culture. I didn't know some of these things about this culture mm -hmm. or people who are saying, hey, like, I, I got to see something about my country and it made me proud to be from that country. So it's been overwhelming uh, positive in terms of like people actually being seen for the first time a lot of times. I love this for you. I think this is amazing. I know you're so passionate about it. So I'm so glad that Paramount Plus picked it up mm -hmm. and now people can tune in. And I'm telling you, you're going to dance when you're watching the show. <laughs> it's, it's impossible not to. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's such a pleasure to see you once again. And congratulations on all your success. I appreciate you. There's a De La Calle promo code for people who don't have Paramount oh. Plus. Oh. For a free trial. We should have started with that. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. We love promo codes here. It is streaming right now on Paramount Plus. We're going to put all this information up on our website, kcalnews.com slash the morning wrap. And I want to link to the promo code so I can hook people up too. Please. Okay, perfect. Thank, Thank you. you.